Hello and welcome viewers of ABG News. My name is Mokoli Sinube and we meet here in the program Zim Road to 2023 where we discuss or we preview the Zimbabwean pre-election period running into the elections that are supposed to be held next year. We are not yet sure of the dates uh, or the actual month when the elections will be held but the run up has begun already and we are joined in this program by Ngabuto Mabena, the General Secretary of the Zimbabwe Communist Party. Mr. Mabena, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, greetings to you and to everyone watching this channel. Uh, there is an election coming next year in Zimbabwe. We already know uh, that there's been a lot of activity back home with parties campaigning, parties beating up one another, parties threatening one another and we have just recently uh, seen some of the fallen ZANU PF members trying to get back to their uh, colleagues. Uh, tell us a bit about what you've seen of this uh, newfound euphoria going into the 2023 elections. Well, what, what we have seen is that uh, there have been by elections in Zimbabwe uh, which were caused by uh, the delay which were caused by COVID. Uh, the by elections have been used in as a, <clears throat> a precursor to what is likely to happen in 2023. We've seen the violence in Caesar, we've seen the violence in uh, Matobo. Uh, so we expect that we are going to have a violent election. We've seen violence in the Midlands, uh, in Marshall and West. Uh, we've seen the attack on the opposition activists. So it's clear that uh, 2023 is going to be violent. Um, the whole world, as we would know, is focused on uh, the war in Ukraine. So the international community will pay very little attention on the Zimbabwean election in 2023. With respect to Professor Jonathan Moyo and uh, Patrick Wow, is yet to be seen on what will happen. We have seen the letter that they wrote apologizing to ZANPF members and supporters. So we are not sure whether we are going to see them in 2023 back in Zimbabwe campaigning for ZANPF. So it's something that uh, we are looking forward to. We will talk about Professor Jonathan Moyo and Joao later, but you've spoken about the violence which you say is a case at what is likely to happen before the elections next year. But from the by-elections that you talk about, the ZANU PF has swept almost everything that has been there in the royal areas, except maybe in Bulili Mamangwe. Uh, why then are they cascading back into the violence that we have always known them for? ZANU PF uh, has always maintained this stronghold in the rural areas. Uh, one would then speculate that uh, when they did their analysis or whether the intelligence information that they were getting, they realized that the triple scene was now moving into their stronghold. Uh, so they had to send a warning to triple C that uh, this is our area, it is protected, will not allow you in our rural communities. So that's what we think is happening. Uh, there is another school of thought that ZANU PF and Triple C, I mean, are, are both uh, violent parties. We saw what happened when they went to bury Mobles in Ali, where a ZANU PF district chairperson had his house burnt, and we are told that he eventually died of depression. How true are these comparisons? How fair are they? Well, we have had a culture of violence in Zimbabwe. Uh, you will know the violence that happened uh, in the split of the MDC in 2005. Uh, the late Senate, uh, uh, ambassador to Senegal, Trude Stevenson, was brutally attacked in Harare uh, simply because uh, she was seen not to be in the correct basket to borrow from Mugabe. Uh, uh, she was brutally attacked. Uh, we have seen other members of the MTC that were attacked. So it's a culture of violence that, that we have in Zimbabwe. This is why it's the Zimbabwe Communist Party. We condemn this uh, violence and uh, we say we must get uh, into the back of ideas, not into the back of uh, hitting each other. Let's engage on policy issues. Uh, let, let us present our manifestos to the people of Zimbabwe and uh, let the people decide. We should not get involved in any acts of violence. And going into 2023, Zimbabwe has since 2000 been a two horse race. Do you think that is going to change? We think that uh, is going to continue at the parliamentary level because uh, if we study 
the elections in 2018 is that uh, you have constituencies where the MTC alliance as led by Chamisa uh, was losing parliamentary seats, but the Chamisa himself winning uh, the uh, presidential votes in those rural communities. Uh, so we think that there's a, some change of voting pattern, uh, though at the moment uh, is is very little, but there is some change of voting pattern to say a voter might not necessarily vote for the councillor, the MP, the president for one political party. As we saw in 2018, people would vote for a ZANPF councillor, ZANPF MP, and an MTC Alliance president. So we think that at a presidential level, people then begin to say uh, who is better uh, that uh, we think can lead. Because what, what is true, uh, as I can see in 2018, is that uh, there are some in ZANU-PF uh, who will not openly challenge the first secretary of ZANU-PF, President Emerson Nangagwa, uh, but they would uh, want to return into parliament and mobilize the ZANU-PF support base to vote for them. But when it comes to presidents, as it was seen again in 2008, Bora uh, they might campaign for another candidate or not campaign for a pres their presidential candidate. And then now this brings us to the Joshua, uh, to the Jonathan Moyo issue. Uh, in 2018, we know that the G40 the, or the so-called G40 cabal of ZANU PF was in bed with Nelson Chamisa, which could have contributed to some of the ZANU PF people voting Nelson Chamisa for the president. But now, their letter of apology has come, and it's highly likely that more G40 uh, members are going to then gravitate back towards Zanupia. How is that going to affect Nelson Chamisa's quest for president? Well, well it means that uh, Nelson Chamisa is going to remain popular uh, in cities, peri-urban centers, not in rural communities where Zanupia is dominating. Um, uh, the vote that uh, he got in 2018, he might not get in 2023. Uh, uh, so the actions by Jonathan Moyo and the Patrick Zhao reverses the gains that uh, Nelson Chamisa had achieved uh, in 2018. He needed to build on that. But the fact that uh, he was not able to keep uh, the G4 on his side, which is now crawling back to ZANPF, uh, uh, some people are saying it's called outside, and uh, because they knew or they've seen that uh, there's nothing that uh, will happen in Triple C in terms of it when winning political power in Zimbabwe, so they are better off crawling back to ZANPF than uh, trying to assist the Nelson Chamisa and his party to win political power in Zimbabwe. One of the issues that they raise in their letter is that there is no alternative uh, in the opposition for a better Zimbabwe. And they raise critical issues that other than ZANU PF must go, these guys are offering nothing. <coughs> Do you think they, 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 there is justification for that? They, they, they are correct in reference to mass political formations, that uh, there is no ideological clarity. Uh, if you talk of mass political formations like Triple C and all these other political formations, there is no clarity. Uh, the only part, of course, that is clear ideologically uh, is the Zimbabwe Communist Party, which, of course, is not a mass political movement. Now, then, does that, in your view, justify them then moving away? They tried to, they had a coalition and an documented one with Triple C, they supported Chamisa, then now they failed to find home there because they raised certain issues which Chamisa didn't attend to, and now they are back to Zanubia. Do you think there is justification based on their net? Look, what we must understand uh, is that uh, the fights inside Zanubia, the internal fights, were all about looting state resources. Uh, the G40 and uh, uh, Tim Lacosta. So the contest was about looting state resources. When the military then assisted uh, uh, Tim Lacosta to grab power, uh, driving uh, G40 out, they then hoped that they were going to get uh, uh, through the back door, through into power through the back door, through the MTC alliance, which failed. They were hoping that maybe in 2023, they were going to get back into power and they'll continue with the looting as they were looting in ZANU-PF, but they are now realizing that uh, 
the chances of Nelson Chamisa winning and them going back to the uh, to, to looting uh, are slim. Hence, they have to crawl back uh, into uh, uh, ZANU PF. So, it's not in our view the question of uh, ideological clarity or lack of ideological clarity. Uh, it is a question of them to be in a political formation that is in government because it presents opportunities for them. Their economic interests will be protected if they are in a party that is in power and it also affords them the chance to once again loot. And it is expected that constitutionally Munangakwa cannot run unless ZANU-PF changes the constitution again, cannot run for presidents in 2028. Do you think these guys coming going back to ZANU-PF, they are trying again to revive themselves in preparation for taking over SG40 in 2028? It is very possible because the uh, 2027 ZANU-PF conference is going to be interesting. Uh, if ZANU-PF wins in 2023, and uh, as we are saying, they do not amend the constitution and uh, President Nangapa does does not get to run for a third term. So there's going to be a contest for power inside uh, ZANU-PF and obviously they want to play a central role, uh, whether it's them or someone that understands them uh, becomes the leader of ZANU-PF in 2027, who then contest as a party candidate in the 2028 elections. And then lastly on ZANU-PF, there is a school of thought which says that Chiwenga, after their conference, uh, came back a, a, a battered man. Almost every perceived supporter of his lost out in the conference. And now we have the G40 coming back and they were rumored to be in bed with Chiwenga. Do you think this is going to anyhow uh, revive his fortunes within the party? First, we think we have been sold a dummy that uh, Chiwenga and Mnangagwa, they are not in good books. Uh, we understand they are drinking parties. Maybe it is part of the intelligence strategy uh, 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 to present to the opposition and the people of Zimbabwe as if uh, there is fire on the mountain inside the ZANU-PF, that there is a serious contest for power between uh, Emerson Mnangagwa and the Chiwenga. Uh, 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 it, it then distracts people because people would then be hoping that uh, maybe something is going to happen, there's going to be change of leadership inside ZANU-PF as was the case in, 20, in 2017. So we are not very sure whether they are indeed fighting, which then leads to say if indeed we are correct in our an analysis that uh, it might be a small screen. So it would mean that uh, they have achieved what they wanted to achieve, that uh, <clears throat> Emerson Mnangagwa becomes the first is secretary of the party and uh, becoming this uh, the candidate for the 2023 uh, elections. But what will be interesting, of course, is if they do not amend the constitution, who then takes over from him? And according to you, who do you think is going to win 2023? It's a difficult question uh, 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 to say uh, because uh, we will have an election under a hostile environment. Uh, uh, Zimbabwe is a deep state. Um, uh, we do not think that uh, the opposition has done enough to win over a uh, key state apparatus uh, uh, that indeed control the state itself uh, because the state is an organ of class rule. Uh, so if that is not done, uh, uh, the state uh, is comfortable uh, or the deep state uh, uh, in this case, which is militaristic in character, is comfortable in having ZANU-PF as its, its puppet, puppet because we know that the military uh, is deeply involved in, in the economy of Zimbabwe, whether in mining, uh, in freight industry and the other sectors of the economy, they are deeply involved. So they will not want to leave power or allow someone to get into power who uh, this person or the party they think that he is then going to close their business opportunities. Uh, so in that case, uh, they, if there is no alternative, they will then give it to ZANU-PF. Uh, you are on record saying what ZANU-PF and C are puppets of the West. Can you expand on that? Yes, you see, uh, ZANU-PF was formed by imperialist forces. Uh, uh, there was a fallout 
when uh, Zimbabwe went to defend Desert Kabila in uh, Ango I mean in Democratic Republic of Congo uh, and again when uh, the Labour Party came into power with the Tony Blair, you remember the land conference in 1998, there was a fallout because the land conference in 1998 it happened at a time when we were sending troops to the DRC where Rwanda and the Uganda were used as proxies by the uh, United States of America and the friends. There was then a fallout and Mugabe then portrayed himself as anti-imperialist and then was able to rally the wall of Africa, the wall of the uh, developing world. Uh, uh, against the imperialist forces was seen as a champion against imperialist forces which then isolated Zimbabwe uh, 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 it was kicked or left the commonwealth uh, uh, sanctions were imposed uh, uh, so it was internationally isolated so when Mnangagwa came into power in 2017 we remember the deputy minister of uh, Britain for Africa was in Harare uh, uh, we also remember that uh, the late Morgan Swangrai left his sick bed, went to Harare because there was anticipation that there was going to be a government of national unity. Nelson Chamisa and others attended the inauguration of Nangagwa in 2017. So it was clear that uh, the coming in of Emerson Nangagwa in 2017 was. Uh, partly to end international isolation. Uh, and we believe that he had he put together a government of national unity at that time, uh, he was going to be readmitted into the Commonwealth, possibly the sanctions might have been removed uh, 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 and so forth, and the end Zimbabwe's international isolation. So he has applied again to join the British Commonwealth, uh, a club of former colonies, of course there are others, like Rwanda and Mozambique were now part, part of that whenever uh, the colonies of Britain uh, as part of ending international isolation. The Commonwealth remains a, 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 a tool used by imperialist forces. So that this is how we then characterize uh, Emerson Nangagwa as having moved his NPF to the, uh, to the right, uh, uh, or far right if, if you like, in terms of trying to appease uh, what is called the international community, but with the history of uh, Nelson Chamisa and the party that he leads is well documented. Uh, and then, let's suppose that the ZANU PF or Zimbabwe is readmitted in the Commonwealth. How then will this affect the chances of the Triple C taking over power? If 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 uh, President Nangagwa then tends to the tune of the imperialist forces, Chamisa's role, according to imperialist, will not be there. Because imperialists, they do not have friends. They are driven by economic interests. If President Nangagwa says we are going to reverse the land reform, uh, we are going to uh, uh, do whatever you want us to do to safeguard your economy, your in economic interests will not involve ourselves. Uh, like we are now having a, a we are on the verge of a war in the Democratic Republic of Congo. If Nangagwa says I will not send the troops there and the Americans installed in, in the DRC, they are puppet and the Nangagwa does not interfere through the Zimbabwean military, then Chamisa's role is no longer there. And in 2018, you said that is the ZCP, which is not a mass movement, you just said that now would not back anyone for the elections because of certain ideological differences with those that were front-running there. Has that stance changed towards 2023? <clears throat> what, what we said was that uh, we didn't think that the election outcome was going to, or the election itself was going to resolve the challenges, the crisis that we're going through, which we're still going through, by the way. Uh, we called for a national dialogue uh, uh, to speak to the rebuilding of the economy in Zimbabwe. Uh, we said in, in just before the election that the outcome of the election was going to be contested, and they indeed were correct. But uh, 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 what we failed to do uh, uh, up to this day is to convince those that are represented in parliament to convene a national economic dialogue to begin to say, how do we rebuild the Zimbabwean economy? So uh, our stance at, uh, we has not changed in at Congress. We said uh, we needed to hold a Congress uh, before elections 
uh, to discuss our attitude to the 2023 elections. So we have not yet held the Congress because uh, there were challenges with the COVID. We have just emerged from COVID. We are preparing to have a Congress. Hopefully we will have it before uh, uh, around February next year, if all goes according to plan, so that we then take a position as the Zimbabwe Communist Party in terms of what is our attitude and our role uh, in the 2023 elections. Okay, and then the other issue that Jonathan Moyo raised before he wrote his letter to Zaru PF was that Triple C cannot exist as a party without structures. And now we're going to elections. We know the money, I mean, the, the entrance fee into being a, a candidate has just been gazetted. It's a hell lot of money. Do you think this and the lack of structures in Triple C is going to give way for ZANU PF infiltration? We do not think that uh, at a presidential level they are going to have problems in raising the 20,000 US dollars uh, for Chamisa to register as a presidential candidate. They do have that money. We do not think that uh, uh, they are parliamentary candidates in the 210 constituencies we fail to raise the 1000 US dollars which is required for one to register and uh, we do not think they would fail to raise 100 dollars for uh, over plus minus 2000 council candidates across the country uh, uh, um, what uh, prof jonathan moy was raising uh, is that it, because uh, rigging itself uh, 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 does not happen at a polling station if you do have election monitors and uh, our history tells us that the opposition struggles uh, uh, in rural communities to feed their polling agents in all polling stations so the issue of structures then comes into play uh, on election day that uh, you are able to feed your candidates and of course, ZANU-PF then also targets at that uh, 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 level, at grassroots level, to infiltrate so that when you then feed a person as a pulling agent and thinking that is your member, uh, you will actually will have filtered a state agent who will then obviously be part of the rigging machinery. But uh, if you get into a pulling station, you have a loyal member uh, uh, as a pulling agent, it is not possible to rig on election day. But before you field a polling agent, you need to field a candidate. Without structure, how do you vet that this particular person here in Bizingo is a bona fide member of Triple C? We know there is MTC Alliance, we know there is ANUPF, and you are saying you don't have structures here. How do you then tell that this person is a loyal member of the party? The, the, this is where the whole problem is, because the, even the MP candidates for the opposition uh, in the last 22 years, uh, there are tourist MPs in rural communities. You have a team that is based in Arare, in Mdare, in Bulawayo, that is supposed to campaign in rural areas, whereas the ZANPF have teams that are locally based. Uh, so the people that will be coming from the cities, they will be going looking for candidates. Anyone that they are recruiting areas where they think they do not have a candidate, they will simply approach an individual, they find that person and say, stand in our name. And uh, which that opens up to infiltration and uh, all these other challenges. Hence the issue of structures becomes key.